Are you tired of feeling overwhelmed by the complexities of investing? Well get ready because I'm about to simplify the entire process for you. In this video, I am going to reveal what happens to your money over time if you don't invest it, the common pitfalls that beginners face when trying to invest, and the reasons behind these problems and how this video will help you solve them. Many beginners often overlook the impact of inflation on their savings and struggle to understand how investments actually work. They may also make the mistake of trying to predict the market or pick individual stocks, leading to disappointment and losses. By the end of this video, you'll grasp fundamental concepts like inflation and learn why index funds are a safer option. You'll also discover the pitfalls to avoid, saving you from potential losses. I've poured extensive research and personal experience into crafting this video. As someone who started investing with limited knowledge, I understand the struggles beginners face. So be assured, you're in the right platform, and by the end of this video, you'll feel empowered to kickstart your investment journey for financial success. The first question is, what happens to my money over time if I don't invest it? Imagine you have $100 that you keep at home without doing anything with it. Over time, the prices of things you might want to buy, like food, electronics, or even rent, tend to increase. This is called inflation, so, while you still have $100, what you can buy with it becomes less and less as prices go up. For instance, if a meal costs $10 now, next year it might cost $11 due to inflation. But if your money stays the same at $100, it won't be enough to buy as many meals because prices have gone up. In short, if you don't do anything with your money, it might not grow, and it could lose its ability to buy as much in the future because of inflation. That's why some people choose to invest their money to make it grow faster than the rising prices. The second question is how does inflation affect my savings? Alright, let's imagine you have $100 saved up in your wallet. You're excited because you've been working hard to save it. Now let's say there's a little thing called inflation happening. Inflation is like when the prices of things you buy go up over time. So, let's pretend inflation makes things more expensive by 3% each year. That means next year the things you buy will cost 3% more. Now if your money isn't growing along with inflation, it's like your $100 can buy less stuff next year than it can buy today. So even though you still have $100, it's not going to go as far. Here's an example. Right now, you can buy 10 notebooks with your $100. But if inflation makes prices go up by 3% next year, those same 10 notebooks might cost $103. So, if you still have just $100, you can only buy about 9.5 notebooks. Your money didn't grow, but prices did, so it feels like you have less, even though the number in your wallet stayed the same. That's why it's important to think about how inflation affects your savings. If your money isn't growing along with the cost of things, you might not be able to buy as much in the future as you can today. The third question is, how do I make money through investing? Investing is like planting seeds that can grow into money over time. Here's a simple guide. Number one, start with a goal. Decide why you're investing. It could be for retirement, buying a house, or just growing your wealth. Number two, learn the basics. Understand different types of investments. Common ones include stocks, bonds, real estate, and mutual funds. Number three, open an investment account. You can do this through a brokerage firm or online investment platforms like Robinhood, Fidelity, or Vanguard. Number four, diversify your investments. Don't put all your money into one thing. Spread it out across different types of investments to reduce risk. Number five, start small. You don't need a lot of money to begin. Some platforms allow you to start with as little as $100. Number six, invest regularly. Set aside a portion of your income to invest consistently. This is called dollar cost averaging and can help smooth out market fluctuations. Number seven, be patient. Investing is a long-term game. Don't expect to get rich overnight. Let your investments grow over time. Number eight, monitor and adjust. Keep an eye on your investments regularly. If something isn't performing well or your goals change, adjust your portfolio accordingly. Let's say you decide to invest in stocks. You open an account with a brokerage firm and buy shares of a company you believe will do well in the future like a tech company. Over time, if the company grows and its stock price goes up, the value of your investment increases. Then if you sell your shares at a higher price than what you bought them for, you make a profit. This is how investing can make you money. Now before we dive deeper into our discussion, I want to make a promise to you. Stick around until the end of this video because I'll be sharing top 5 profitable investing options where you can start investing with a limited budget. So, stay tuned for that valuable information coming your way. The fourth question is, how do I buy shares in a company? 
Buying shares in a company is like owning a piece of that company. Here's how you can do it. First activity is to open a brokerage account. Start by choosing a brokerage firm. Think of it like a bank account but for buying and selling stocks. Examples of brokerage firms include Robinhood, E-Trade, and TD Ameritrade. Second activity is to research companies. Decide which company you want to buy shares in. Look into their business, how they make money, and if they're doing well in the market. For example, if you're interested in technology, you might look at companies like Apple or Microsoft. Third activity is to place an order. Once you've chosen a company, you'll place an order through your brokerage account. You can specify how many shares you want to buy and at what price. There are different types of orders, but for beginners, a market order is usually the simplest. This means you're willing to buy the shares at the current market price. Fourth activity is to pay for the shares. After you place your order, you'll need to pay for the shares. This money will be taken from your brokerage account. Make sure you have enough money in your account to cover the purchase. Fifth activity is to monitor your investment. Once you own shares in a company, you can keep track of how they're doing. Stock prices can go up and down, so it's important to stay informed. You can check your brokerage account or use financial news websites to see how your investment is performing. Remember, buying shares comes with risks, so it's essential to do your research and only invest money you can afford to lose. If you're unsure, consider talking to a financial advisor for guidance. The fifth question is, how do I decide which shares to buy and what are the parameters to check if it is a good stock or not? When you're thinking about buying shares of a company, you want to make sure it's a good investment. Here are some simple things you can look at. Number one, company basics. Start by understanding what the company does. Are they making products people want? For example, think about a company like Apple. They make iPhones, iPads, and MacBooks that many people buy. Number two, financial health. Look at the company's financial health. Are they making money? You can check their profits and revenues. If a company is making more money over time, it's usually a good sign. For example, if you look at a company like Amazon, you'll see their revenue has been growing steadily over the years. Number three, debt level. Check how much debt the company has. Too much debt can be risky because they have to pay it back with interest. You can find this information in the company's financial statements. A company with low debt like Microsoft might be a safer bet. Number four, competitive advantage. See if the company has something special that makes it stand out from competitors. This could be a unique product, brand loyalty, or a patent on technology. For instance, consider a company like Coca-Cola. They have a strong brand and a secret recipe that sets them apart from other soda makers. Number five, management team. Look at who's running the company. Are they experienced and trustworthy? You can research the CEO and other top executives to see if they have a good track record. Warren Buffett, the famous investor, often looks for companies with strong management teams like Berkshire Hathaway. Number six, price and valuation. Consider whether the current price of the stock is reasonable compared to the company's earnings. You can use a metric called the price to earnings ratio, PE ratio to help with this. A lower PE ratio might mean the stock is undervalued, while a higher PE ratio might mean it's overvalued. Remember, investing in stocks carries risks, so it's essential to do your research and understand what you're investing in. It's also a good idea to diversify your investments by spreading your money across different types of stocks and other assets. If you're unsure, you might consider consulting with a financial advisor who can provide personalized advice based on your financial goals and risk tolerance. The sixth question is, what are index funds, how it works, and why are they recommended for beginners? Index funds are like a big basket of stocks or bonds that represent a particular market index, such as the S&P 500. Imagine you're at a pizza party, and instead of choosing just one kind of pizza, you get a slice of every type available. That's what an index fund does with stocks or bonds. They're great for beginners because they're easy to understand and offer broad exposure to the market without needing a lot of expertise. When you invest in an index fund, you're essentially buying a small piece of every company or bond in that index. Here's how it works. Let's say you invest in an S&P 500 index fund. The S&P 500 is a collection of 500 big companies in the US. When those companies do well, the value of the index fund goes up. If some companies in the S&P 500 do poorly, it doesn't hurt you too much because you own a little bit of all 500 companies. This diversification helps reduce risk. 
For example, if you put $100 into an S&P 500 index fund, you might own a tiny bit of Apple, Microsoft, Google, Tesla, and hundreds of other big companies. If those companies collectively do well, your investment grows. If they don't do so well, your investment might not grow as much, but you're not relying on just one company to succeed. So, index funds are like a simple, diversified way for beginners to invest in the stock or bond market without having to pick individual stocks or bonds. The seventh question is, how much money do I need to start investing? Starting to invest as a beginner doesn't always need a ton of money. You can start with as little as $100 or even less. Some investment platforms let you begin with small amounts like $5 or $10. It's more about getting into the habit of investing regularly than starting with a big chunk of cash. For example, if you can spare $50 each month, you can set up automatic transfers to an investment account. Over time, these small amounts can grow into something significant, especially if you're investing in something that earns compound interest, like stocks or index funds. So don't worry if you don't have a lot to start with. Just begin with what you can comfortably afford and stay consistent with your investments. Over time, your money will have the chance to grow. The eighth question is how risky is buying shares in a company? Buying shares in a company can be like playing a game where you might win big but you might also lose money. Let me explain with a simple example. Imagine you have a lemonade stand with your friends, you all put in some money to start the business. Now, if the lemonade stand does really well and lots of people buy lemonade from you, you make a profit. That's like buying shares in a successful company. You can make money when the company does well. But what if it rains all summer and nobody wants lemonade? Then you might not make any money, and you might even lose some of the money you put into the business. This is similar to buying shares in a company that doesn't do well. You might lose money if the company struggles. So buying shares is like taking a risk. It's not guaranteed that you'll make money, but if you choose the right company, you could earn a profit. Just remember, like any game, it's important to do your research and understand the risks before you decide to invest. As promised, here is the top five most profitable investing options that can be started with a limited budget. Number 1. Stock market via fractional share. Instead of buying whole shares of expensive stocks, you can invest in fractional shares through various investment apps like Robinhood, Acorns, or SoFi Invest. This allows you to invest in companies like Amazon, Google, or Tesla with as little as $5 to $10. Number 2. Index Fund. Similar to exchange-traded fund and mutual fund, index funds pool money from many investors to buy a diversified portfolio of assets. They aim to mirror the performance of a specific market index, such as the S&P 500. Investing in index funds can be a low-cost and low-risk way to gain exposure to the stock market, making them suitable for beginners. Number 3 is Real Estate Crowdfunding. Real estate crowdfunding platforms allow you to invest in real estate projects with a low initial investment. You can participate in commercial or residential properties without the hassle of property management. Websites like Fundrise or Realty Mogul offer opportunities to invest in real estate with as little as $500 or $1,000. Number 4. Peer-to-peer -peer Lending Peer-to-peer -peer lending or P2P platforms allow you to lend money to individuals or small businesses in exchange for interest payments. Websites like Prosper or Lending Club facilitate these transactions. While there are risks involved, the potential returns can be attractive and you can start with a relatively low investment. Number 5. Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency trading or investing has gained immense popularity and can be started with a relatively low budget. Look into established cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum or explore promising altcoins. However, be sure to research thoroughly and understand the risks involved. These are top 5 profitable investing options as a beginner with minimal investment. But remember, while these options have the potential for profits, they also come with risks. It's crucial to do thorough research, understand the risks involved, and consider seeking advice from a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Additionally, trends can change rapidly, so it's essential to stay updated on market developments. Now that you've got the basics of investing down, it's time to take action. Remember, the key is to start now. Don't wait for tomorrow or the perfect moment because every moment counts when it comes to building your wealth. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments which tip resonated with you the most. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you never miss out on future content. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.